What a great day it is today. I have Gregory here, and I've got my best buddy Dean Sykes with me, so we're glad you're joining us. We're going to be talking today about the peace of God. And so you can like, subscribe, share. We'd love for you to do that. Get your friends to watch because it's going to be a grand time today we're going to have as we share with you a few minutes about the peace of God. So uh, my buddy Dean and I, we've been extremely good buddies for uh, over 35 years now. 35 years. So that's how the Lord works. You always need someone. Let me tell you this. It's important. I'll just go ahead and say this. It's important who you surround yourself with spiritually in life because you want somebody that you can share and confide in and uh, talk about, hey, pray for me about this or share the victories with and share struggles with even. So that's the relationship that's what we have. Dean and I have, and uh, and I suggest that uh, that you do that. Find you somebody, a friend that you that you can trust. So, but I wanted to share today and get, talk today about Isaiah twenty six three, which is one of my favorite verses. It says, "Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee." So, Dean, uh, like I said. You and I have been buddies for a long time, and uh, you know, one of my favorite, another favorite verse is, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. So, as a minister, and right. you've ministered now to how many students? Two and a half million. Two and a, in how many years? 32 years. 32 years, and you can actually, if it's the first time you've seen Dino, uh, you can go to umatter.us US and uh, look him up and uh, support him, support what he does. Over two and a half million students, that's a lot to speak to and tell them that they matter. So, but the peace of God, and what I find with people, Dean, is they really, the, is something they don't understand the peace of God. They, they understand existing. Right. They understand making it till tomorrow. They understand maybe uh, 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 just having a moment of, of, of not worrying, but for the most part, people are worried about stuff. They're either anxious. anxious. So uh, from your standpoint, you see a lot of people in a, in, in a week. So right. so how do you deal with it and what do you? You know, that, that verse you quoted, yes. and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. If you really break that down, peace, by definition, is a guard. That's good. And it guards your heart and mind. What does it guard it from? From the cares of the world, yep. from the anxiety you just talked about, mm -hmm. from worry. It guards it from getting in. Yeah. But then, if you go back to Deuteronomy, right, we have a choice to make. It's who we. Go, it's if you do this, then God will do this. Right. So peace to me is is a choice, without a doubt. And it's freely available to anyone yeah. who serves God. I think it's a, a lifestyle, and Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Yes. And so the Bible says that our feet, as Christians. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've been sharing on in church lately is called the barefoot covenant that I got from Moses. The Lord told Moses, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. And he told Joshua, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. And so as, as I was studying through this and talking to Jackie about it, then uh, I felt like the Lord showed me that for me, to God never breaks his covenant. No. But, he, but, but you and I can step out of the covenant. Yep. And the way we do that is if our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, when we go to announcing, uh, it, said, uh, it said, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. So when we quit bringing good news, mm -hmm. we're stepping out. Your feet get ugly. Your feet. That's what I told them. That we get, uh, really? Should, yeah. That's I, how close we are. Not only that, I told them that one, the other day I told them that, that, that God could really just take the stink out of your feet. He could just fix you. Yeah, that's something you would say. I would say that. And he could just fix you up because your feet are shod in preparation of the gospel of peace. How many places do you walk in? How many businesses, you may be your business, how many school settings do you walk in? How many places do you walk in where you know that it's not peaceful? Well, mine in your position, and your position as a Christian, you go in, like you say, you go in schools, you go in assemblies, you go in uh, venues that have thousands of people, and you face all kind of things of unrest. Mm -hmm. So if you're not at peace, right? so how do you go in, how do you prepare? So talking to the folks today, how do you prepare yourself for anything and remain at peace if it's a guard? Right. Well, if, you know, when I, when I go into a school, for example. Right. Or I go into a city, we land, we, we, we're driving to the event or wherever. I'll either have peace or I'll get this uneasiness in my heart. Right. This, I call it the yuck. It's right. just, it doesn't feel right. 
And you can either pray through that and get on the other side of it. And sometimes a lack of peace is God's way of saying, I want to get your attention about something. Okay, right? so that's you, good. You're looking for the peace very in good. the unpeace. Like, is this God or is this the enemy? That's right. It's very good. And so how do you know the difference? Well, there's a good God and a bad devil. That's, that's what right. you taught me, so I will go with that. Four right. words, good God, Pretty bad simple. devil. Yep. So when we go into a city and we go into to an assembly and I don't have peace, it's not because we're in the wrong place. It's what we're coming up against. And the message that we're getting ready to proclaim, declare, or speak, yeah. that message has to find its way from my heart, through my lips, past their mental capacities, and into their heart. Okay. Where, and if you have the peace of God in your life, then you can actually speak to the, to the environment you go into. That's good. Right? Yes. Because you now take authority over the spiritual climate of where you are. So if you go home from work and it's just unmitigated hell, you have an opportunity to speak the peace of God over there. And you don't have to go up to somebody and go, I speak peace. No. You, go, you might just go, Lord, That's right. I need your peace right here. Yeah. So here, thank you. Don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Don't good. take the bait. That's really good. Because if you take the bait, I look. I, here's what I think when you say don't take the bait. Because all of us deal with different issues, different emotions. People have different emotions. So the way I always look at it, if, if, as a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So that means that we as a tree have the fruit of the Spirit on our tree. Yes. So uh, to take the bait means that we're going to take the bait and we're going to eat whatever that person is eating yep. or whatever that is or feeding what us. Serving. what they're serving. Oh, that's a good thing. Whatever's being served to us versus what God wants us to serve. Yes. So if anger is coming your way, yep. then they need peace. Peace. Uh, or, or, or look at it this way. Or if wrath or anger, maybe they need some gentleness. Because a gentle answer Turn it away. turns away wrath. So with, without the Word of God and without you doing stuff with the Word of God being first place in your life. And that's one of the principles, I think, to maintain your peace. Is the Word of God has to, because the Prince of Peace is Jesus. He was the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And uh, so guess what? It's his word that counts, and it's his word in our heart that gives us the peace. Because it's not just his word, it's his very presence. It's who he is. It's, his, it's who he when, is. When he was on the boat, and, yes. the, and the disciples were saying, do you not care that we're sinking? Yeah. And he looked at them like, bless your heart. And keeping in mind, this was Jesus, the Son of Man, not the Son of God. Right. And what did he say to the storm? Peace. peace. Be still. Mm -hmm. So peace is actually a weapon that you can use to diffuse those situations mm. that are rising up against you or your family or your business or your finances. When all hell's breaking loose and you don't know what to do, right. I start off by just saying, Jesus, because in, in that one name yeah. is everything you need. But typically, I, I start going, Lord, I just speak peace. Yeah, I speak peace, Lord. And it works. Oh, if it didn't, none of us would be sitting here. None of us be, yeah. Because, you know what? What God established, and we don't have time to go into all this, but what God established when he created Adam on Genesis 1 was he created Adam to have dominion over yeah. the earth. Yep. And then Adam messed it up, he and Eve. And so now Jesus came and replaced that and re reinstated us back in that, that place of dominion. The Bible says that the little G, God, the devil was the God of this world. Well, Jesus came because we believe on him and he destroyed the works of the devil so that we now can go and spread that peace. Yeah. Yeah. We can. How, how many times have you walked into a hospital? A lot. And there have been just, just unimaginable sorrow, mm -hmm. pain, not no, worry. And because you're anointed by God as a pastor right. to love people, because I, I, you know, that's one of the that's one of the things God's been communicating to me over and over and over. Dino, you are in the people business, that's it. right? Yeah. And you walk in, and just your presence brings peace. Yeah. Well, that can be. You don't have to be an, a minister to do that. Anybody can Anybody. walk in peace. We are all ministers. Uh, of we are that reconciliation. Reconciliation. So. Maybe today you're going through a family situation, or maybe you're going through a situation that you just there just there is no, there's everything but peace. That's good. You show up on the scene mm -hmm. as a spirit filled believer who loves God, who's committed to the Holy Ghost, yeah. who has the Word. Your presence mm -hmm. brings peace. It does because He is peace. Yeah, you know something I learned uh, uh, when I was sailing and on the road years ago. 
I used to tune in to focus on the family. Mm -hmm. And James Dobson, he had this great radio program. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just accolades to wherever that was and whenever that was, it was good for me. And uh, he, he used this term that I've, that I've used over and over in my own life. He called it the ministry of presence. Mm. And he says, when you know that the Lord is yeah. who he is in you and who you, who you belong to, then no matter where you are, you carry right. that presence. And his presence is exuding peace. Well, it, and, and there's also in the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. Come on. And when you have joy, you have strength. Come on. So if you're sitting there, you're, you're just beaten up and you're not sure how to get through. I, I mean, right, once I went into a, to a funeral home where someone had died. Yeah. And there was tremendous just turmoil sitting there because they didn't really, they didn't have a lot of hope. Right. But when I came in, I wasn't super spiritual. I just love God and love people. And they sensed something different. And all of a sudden, all these people who were in the corner crying eventually migrated over to where we were and just said, now, why do you have such peace? Peace. Well, I know where he is. That's right. I know right where he is. He's not lost. I know right where he is. Uh -uh. I know how to get to him. And I think... If people can grab hold of, it's, it's what I call the intangible asset of hope, and hope and peace are interconnected. If you can grab hold of hope and know that the anchor of your soul is the peace of God, which right. surpasses all understanding, right. and it is a guard for your heart and your mind, mm -hmm. then you begin, it all goes back to how you began this with Isaiah 26.3. They, they have this because why? One, one, there's only one prerequisite. Mm -hmm. They trust in him. That's right. Trust is the key. It is the key. And, and, and along with the trust, I like to add Thanksgiving. I said mm. the other day that Thanksgiving is the igniter on the altar of your heart. So good. Thanksgiving. I think I probably said that somewhere. You before. probably did. I probably I learned think you're it probably from you. quoting that. Yeah, so most likely. But it's the, it ignites the, the, the things of God. And you're talking about guard. And in, uh, I think it's Proverbs 4 20 says, uh, guard your heart with all diligence, diligence. for out of it flow the issues of life yep. and, and and there if you research that uh that, that issues of life if you research it about guarding your heart that the issues of life is like a spring time uh that you're living in or in the middle of where you're living that issue of the middle of where you're living in and it translates into that that we can live in a perpetual springtime with god mm. by guarding our heart and knowing that he is full time, it's a full time springtime with God. You don't have to go through a thing. I hear people saying, "Well, you know, the heavens are locked up." Or not. that's all a lie. Listen, there's no, there's no heaven locked up over you because the peace of God. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace, and the Bible says that He broke down the barrier yep. between God. And man. and man. And so there's no barrier between us. The only barrier is what do you believe? And like today, you may be believing God for something, uh, for arthritis to be healed. I feel a little of that. That, that. that today, as we're sitting here in agreement for Dean and I in agreement for you, that you know what? Healing is for you today. The healing power of God. You may be dealing with a blood issue, a blood disease or, or something today. And as you're listening, and you begin to thank God and say, you know, the peace of God provides everything. And, when, and if you look that word peace up, Dean, and break it down, it means welfare. Mm -hmm. It means comfort. It actually means health. It means the whole being, nothing missing, nothing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And so I'm telling you, when the Prince of Peace showed up, his name was Jesus, he brought heaven to us, and he brought heaven to you. And today, for Dean and I, we're bringing heaven to you. I'm going to read you another verse here. Out of the blessing chapter, uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, we call it the blessing chapter. It says you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, etc. Then it goes into what happens if, if, if you don't follow the Lord. And so when I found this verse 47, I know I've read it before, but last week it got illuminated to me, Dean. It was, and uh, it says, because thou servest not the Lord, that servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Now stop there. Well, you can hey, do this real fast. Yeah. For those who don't understand King James, yeah. make that make sense. 
Well, when you serve the Lord uh, w with joyfulness, when you say, God is good, God is providing for me, Jesus has come to my life, I now have the peace of God. Joyfulness, what does it mean to be joyful? To thank God that, hey, I woke up this morning. To thank God, yeah. hey, I've got a future because the Bible says that the future I have, I know the future I have for you, says the Lord. And then what brings me joy is the word. David said, it says, I found thy word. And it was the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So with that verse you're reading yes. right now, yes. if you don't live that way. If you don't live that way with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. And let me just stop there. So what I do in my life is, I, I, if nothing else, I find me three things to be thankful of. Because yep. we all have what I call warfare. Every day you're going to wake up and there's going to be something you're going to have to overcome. Every day. I call it normal. And then there's some days you wake up and it's more than normal. It's what I call just something that's come after you. So with all that said, then you have, you got to find something to worship God, thank God for it, abundance of all things. If you're thinking, uh, uh, thinking for anything, be thankful of, be thanking him for the abundance of all things. So verse 48 says, therefore, if you don't do that, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Uh oh, so I, so what's it worth to have a joyful heart? Yeah. What's it worth to say, I'm going to serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart? Now, let me go back to this too, Dean. That is a choice. And it has nothing to do, God doesn't need you to affirm him. No. This has nothing to do with God having an ego. Mm -mm. You tell me how great I am. Mm -mm. This has everything to do with how much God loves us, and he wants us to live with this kind of joy and peace. But everything starts with what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right. Yeah. He watches over his word to perform, perform it. it. So if he's going to perform his word, then guess what? Uh, which I'm going to try to end on this scripture here in John recently. And I, I know Dean has known this scripture a long time. But I, but it just sort of, uh, and I think Josh, who's over here, you know, he's well-rounded in the word as well. I'm sure he's known it. But anyhow, it's John 1 says, how important it is, how important the Word of God is. And I don't know where you are as far as where you place the Word of God, but the Word of God has to be first place in everything. I've actually dealt with people before as a pastor, and they've said, well, you know what? I know that's what the Bible says, but, but. Ooh, get your butt out of the way. There you, go. you don't want no. to say that. So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, so if you break that down and go to put the word in there where it says him, because he was the word. Right. So let's go to verse 3 and put his put the word in there. And verse 4 says, all things were made by the word. Talking about you said what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And without the word was not anything made that was made. So in your life, you're creating your life by what you're thinking and by what you're letting come out of your mouth. Sure. You, you, you are your life's own prophet. Correct. What you declare is going to happen. And verse four, in the word was life and the life was the light of men. Mm. And so today I'm telling you, you can have the peace of God. You could have the joy of the Lord as your strength. You can have the fruit of the spirit operating in you. You can know that God is for you. And if God be for you, who could be against you? You can have fellowship with God. You can have fellowship with your brothers and sisters. You can know that there is a God has a plan for you that if you could, it'd be like, uh, what is it, 1 Kings 6, where the prophets, uh, the, 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 the servant was saying, Ooh, we're surrounded. We're surrounded. What are we going to do? Open your eyes. And the prophet said, oh, uh, let him see. Open his eyes. And they said, oh, my goodness, there's more of us. If you could see today, and this is for somebody for sure, if you could see, I don't know what you're facing, what kind of situation you're facing, but if you could see today, the Bible says that we are surrounded by thousands of angels mm. and that daily loadeth us with benefits, benefits, even the God of our salvation. You're daily being loaded with benefits. So let's look to the benefits. Let's do this. Let, let's have a heart. If, if you've got a heart of gratitude, then you will cease having a bad attitude. It had to rhyme. It had to rhyme. It had to rhyme. And it does. There you go. I feel better. And so that. today we're so thankful you joined us. Dean, thank you for being with us. We love you. We love your ministry. Love you touching the world. And God's using you.
to bring hope to the hopeless and you and you're teaching folks that they do matter and yep. you know you're, you're having some tremendous results you get some tremendous letters from people and you get some tremendous results of how how what god has put in you is changing them so we're thankful that's we're for thankful sure. well god bless you we'll talk to you soon